In this video, we'll take a look at the five solid principles in Java. The first is the single responsibility principle. So in all of these, we're going to take a look at some bad code, which break or violate the, one of these five solid principles. And then we'll take a look at how we should enforce the principle. So a single responsibility principle, it, a class should have only one reason to change which means it should only have one job or responsibility. So let's take a look at a bad case here. So let's just look at this code here. We have a user manager class, and we can see that we have a method on it called add user, and we also have a method on it called send email. So this is bad because it violates the single responsibility principle by doing two things. So what we wanna do is we just want to split it up into two services and the user registration service is responsible for user related tasks such as adding a user and an email service is responsible for email related tasks like sending the email. So you know, this follows encapsulation. So each, um, you know, defines the purpose of each class and it adheres to don't repeat yourself a splitting responsibility reduces the likelihood of repeated code. Uh, and Yagni, you ain't going to need it as it avoids overcomplicating a single class with multiple functions. So I want to take a look at the open close principle as well. So the open close principle states here that software entities, so these are classes, modules, functions, they should be open for extension but closed for modification. So let's take a look at a bad example of when this is violated. So here we see we got a shape and this is a class here and it has this method area on it. And then we've got this area calculator and this violates the OCP by modifying the existing class to add a new feature. So here we see we also have these circle and rectangles which we'll see in just a moment where determining if the instance is a circle or if it's a rectangle. And then if it is, we calculate the area based on the actual class itself. So the rectangle, the width or whatever it is. So this is in contrast to, and let's just take a quick look at circle here. So here we've got a better shape here. So here we've got an abstract shape here. So Basically, what we can do is we have a circle which can extend that shape and we can override the area method that's on there rather than doing something like this where we actually, uh, you know, have to modify the existing class for that area feature. So if we take a look at the good case here, we can see that the area calculate area calculator it has this calculate area method it just takes this abstract shape in and then we get the area based off that so that is essentially the open close principle <clears throat> third principle i want to take a look at is list of substitution principle so this says that subtypes must be substitutable for their base types without altering the correctness of the program so let's take a look at a bad example. So let's say we have a bird and it has a fly class on it. But then we have an ostrich and the ostrich extends the bird class. Uh, however, ostriches can't actually fly. So it has the fly method on it. Birds have a fly method on it. But this ostrich, even though it's classified as a bird, it can't actually fly. So what we want to do is we want to split it up a little better. We actually want to have the interface flyable and then we have a flying bird which implements this flyable. So that's following LSP by using a more appropriate hierarchy which has this fly method on it. And then we can have a ostrich class which doesn't implement the flyable even though it's still a bird. So it's just a way of organizing your code. And, you know, it has the, it demonstrates how to 
inheritance properly or do it appropriately by separating the flyable and non-flyable birds and also encourages separation of concerns by distinguishing different behaviors okay so the next one i want to take a look at is the interface segregation principle which states that clients should not be forced to implement interfaces they do not use so let's take a look at a bad example let's say we have this worker interface and a worker can work and it can eat for example we have a developer which implements the worker interface so they can both work and they can eat but let's say you have a robot which also implements the worker or it can work but it doesn't eat so that violates the ISP and we shouldn't be forced to use that so instead of that what we can do is we can create a workable interface which has the we need to implement the work method and an eatable interface and then if we take a look at robot here we can implement just one of them the workable interface and if we look at the developer here, we can see that it implements both the workable and eatable. And then it follows ISP by splitting the interfaces. So uh, this encourages encapsulation by defining precise contracts for each class. And it supports you ain't going to need it by not requiring unnecessary methods and promoting cleaner interfaces. And finally, the last method, uh, sorry, the last principle I want to take a look at is the dependency inversion principle. Once again, we'll look at a bad example followed by a good example. So it says here high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Both should depend on abstractions or interfaces. So let's take a look at a light bulb example here. So we're going to have a light bulb and a switch. So the light bulb is going to be the low level and the switch is going to be the high level. And the reason for that is the low level stuff. This represents a specific implementation detail of the system. So it's a concrete thing. So we have a light bulb and we can turn it on or turn it off. Whereas if we, when we have a switch, this defines the business logic. So we can see that it's using a light bulb here and then it's used when we operate the switch it will turn on the light bulb now doing it like this violates the dip by having this high level module uh, this switch depend on this low level module here instead what we want to do is we want to create this interface here switchable so we have this turn on and turn off method that way on the light bulb we can implement switchable have the turn on turn off class and then when it comes to actual switch we can pass in any device not necessarily just any switchable device that is so a light bulb in this case but it could extend to other switchable devices and then we operate it by turning the specific device on so we can see what we've done here is we've leveraged abstraction so we're depending on the interface rather than the concrete implementation. And this promotes decoupling and testability, making it easy to swap out implementations or tests with mock objects. So here we can see that we've covered these five solid principles in Java. I hope it helps you write cleaner, more maintainable code. And it should be useful when you're coding in an OOP fashion. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.